So what does the first two hours of a For the Worthy Master Mode game look like? Here's a quick summary. Hey there, my name is Salandrak and welcome to my Terraria 1.4 Journey's End For The Worthy Master Mode playthrough. I had started a For The Worthy world a while back intending to make a playthrough series, but then got distracted with other videos and after the 1.4.1 update came out, decided to start over again. Consequently, I'm not going into this challenge completely blind, but will it save me from repeatedly dying, especially in the early game? Well, based on that intro, not so much. In this world, we'll be playing as Odysseus, and true to Greek mythology, his home will be called Ithaca. Will he eventually find his princess? Or will he be cursed by the gods to never see peace in the land? Let's find out! While we get started harvesting wood, let's talk briefly about what it means to be in a For the Worthy world. This is a special seed in Terraria that basically just makes the game harder, especially when used on Master Mode. Monsters have more defense and deal more damage, bosses are tweaked to be more difficult, and there's a lot more lava throughout the world. Bunnies explode when killed, and trees and pots have bombs in them. The early game is particularly brutal, just as on Master Mode, as it takes forever to kill anything, and most things can kill you in one to three hits. Ugh, and right off the bat I've got a pretty strong purple slime heading towards me. I'm going to keep my distance until the demolitionist can help out. Speaking of which, that's one of the changes in For the Worthy. You don't start out with the guide, but instead get the resident Bomberman to help you out. After he softens up the slime a bit with his grenades, I decide to try my hand at it, and yep, my pickaxe only does one damage per hit. Hours later... He's got a few blue reinforcement buddies coming over, so I head back to the safety of the other side of my demolitionist. I get lucky and hop over the blue slimes, don't feel like dealing with them, and then decide to go after some lead ore that is just below the surface. One of the other changes to the game in a For the Worthy world is that the ore veins are generally larger and the mining time is faster across the board, so it's not all bad changes. After I vacate the hole I see that there's a pinky down there. This is way too strong of a slime to bother with at this point, so I just leave it there and then take the time to make a crafting table, wood sword, and basic wood armor. <laughs> this stuff is practically useless in master mode, but hey, every bit helps. After that I head to the right and start to venture into a cave. I see there's a bunch of stone near the entrance and go ahead and gather it. I'll need stone to make arrows as well as a furnace. I don't want to bother with the slimes heading my way, so I throw up a dirt barricade and then see that there's also a bunch of clay here. This is nice to gather early on so that a basic flower garden can be made. I'm going to want to start using buff potions as soon as possible, so I'll need a way to grow herbs as soon as I get some seeds for them. Soon I head deeper, but before long decide that it's just too dangerous. With no ranged weapons it's impossible to hit slimes that are below me, so I do a platform jump to get up on the ledge and then head up. I stop at the top of the tunnel to dig my way through to the other side of the hill. In the future I'll want to be able to run straight through the hill rather than going up and over, and I also want to see what's on the other side anyways. Up ahead I pause to get a big tree, you get lots of wood from these big guys so they're nice to find, but a bit further I see a desert guarded by a vulture and decide to go no further. I'll definitely want a bow before trying to take on these guys. Near the hill there's another pinky so I throw up a floor to help him on his way to the east, then continue back through the hill. I take my chances and just run through a trio of green, blue, and pinky slimes, and soon enough I'm back to the origin spawn and my pal, the demolitionist. It's almost night and I do not want to get caught out in the open when zombies and demon eyes are out and about, as they are way too strong to deal with right now. So I start building a basic house. This will most likely be a temporary structure until I get the lay of the land a little bit better, but will serve as a home base while I start gathering materials and hopefully acquire my first handful of NPCs. Once I've got a roof over my head I make a forge, smelt some lead, and make an anvil. Then it's back to construction, put in a floor, then open the wall a bit with some platforms to kill a few slimes. I'll need the gel for torches, which in turn can be used to make flaming arrows a bit later. Looks like I have enough iron to make a chest, so I go ahead and put my money in the chest for safekeeping. On master mode you drop all your money when you die, and I certainly don't want to lose anything. 
I then make my clay pots and briefly consider selling them for a little bit of money, but decide against it. I don't have any seeds yet, so the flower garden can wait for later. Once the zombies start showing up, I make some platform holes in the wall so I can try out my new bow. As you can see, it's not terribly effective against the zombies, and the demolitionist is definitely doing more damage than I am. Looks like his grenades don't hurt me though, which is nice, otherwise hanging out with him would be deadly. I spend a decent amount of time plinking away at the zombies with my bow. I'm hoping to get a shackle accessory that might have a good mod on it, or even a zombie arm which would be stronger than my wooden sword. But unfortunately I'm not having much luck and they're taking way too long of a time to kill. So I continue construction, before long I've got valid housing here for me and my buddy. I then start to excavate below the house as I'm planning to add a few additional rooms down here for the other early game NPCs. The guy, the merchant, the nurse, and anyone else I can get to show up early on. The poofing of the fallen stars heralds the break of dawn, and the zombies start to run away, so I go ahead and open the wall and cut them down... slowly. I grab a couple of day blooms and then notice what looks like some more under some trees and yep, more lead. I take some time in the morning clearing the trees by the house and find that my bow works pretty well against the slimes. I then start leveling out the ground to the sides. I like a large flat area anywhere I might be fighting stuff, and this location will most likely be my main fighting arena anyway, so I get to work. Unfortunately, I get distracted and don't realize I'm about to get sandwiched between two slimes, and trying to jump over one doesn't quite work out, so there's my first death. After I res, I go ahead and make some flaming arrows for some additional firepower, and they work even better against the slimes. More money goes into the storage chest, then I head out to do some cave exploration. Just past where I got on the first day, I find my first chest, and lo and behold, a wand of sparking. This is a great early find, as it does pretty decent range damage without using any ammo, just mana. Since I don't have a grappling hook yet, I use platforms and ropes to get up and down elevation changes. A little further is a second chest that has a nerd bag, can of worms, a blowpipe, and a reds potion. In a For the Worthy world, this potion gives you three random buffs that last for 30 minutes, so it's probably best used for boss fights, or at least when you're a little stronger and won't just die with it on and lose it. A little deeper I come across my first lava pools, and just after that is a dart trap. These things don't hurt too bad on lower difficulties, but here, they're deadly. Right next to it is a blink root, but unfortunately it isn't in bloom so I don't get any seeds from it. I then grab the pressure plate, and here's a tip. If you hold a pressure plate on your cursor or hotkey bar, you can see wiring of traps, which I'll demonstrate a bit later. Below the trapped area is an emerald tree, and below that is a... Uh, second death. I got excited about the life crystal and saw the pressure plate right before I landed on it. Oh well. I head straight back down into the caves and soon enough that life crystal is mine. I pick up the tombstone and soon after can see a ghost coming my way. Oh, and here you can see the wiring while holding the pressure plate. Luckily the ghost just floats down below me so it's easy to take out. I try to take out the slimes below me, but it's taking too long so I hop down and try to put up a wall and die instead. There's death number three. Once I respawn, I decide to head out to the west to see what I can find, and just past a small pond I find another hill with a cave, so down I go. Not too far in I find some lava pools, make some more platforms to get across, and a bit later find and disarm another dart trap. A bit further down I find a large patch of amethyst. An amethyst hook is the worst hook in the game in terms of its reach, but I'll take whatever I can get at this point. Unfortunately there's only 13 here, so I'm too short of the needed 15. I mess up fighting a red slime and quickly use a recall potion to escape and live. After partially boarding up my walls, I start sorting my inventory and then don't notice two shorty zombies that slipped in and soon enough me and my demolitionist are both dead. And bad news, I never saved any explosives so now he won't respawn until I can find a bomb or something. I manage to clear out the zombies, pick up the tombstone and then get turned into a pile of flesh by a ghost. Whoops. So back to back deaths number 4 and 5. Respawn again and manage to barely take out the ghost, I then finally remember that I need a campfire which will give me a little bit of added health regen. Most of the rest of the night is spent building rooms for the house. I use my life crystal to get 120 health, then sort my inventory and set up the chests I found earlier. I open the herb bag to get some shiver thorn seeds and a handful of water leaves, so that's nice. And what's up with that green moon? Is that a For the Worthy thing? I can't remember ever seeing it be that color before. 
There have been a ton of fallen stars landing near the house, so I try to clear out the enemies, hoping to be able to dash out and grab them. More mana would be really nice, and eventually I succeed on the right side. Can I do the same on the left? Yep, in total I'm able to add three more mana stars, which will really help. I do more room construction for a bit, then further expand my crafting area with the sawmill. I don't have a lot of lead, but go ahead and make a couple of buckets. I'll want water for future fishing ponds and lava for a volcano trap. Then it's back to home construction for the rest of the night. Soon enough, the stars go poof and it's morning once again. I finish up this basement room, keep building, and as the sky starts to lighten, Louis the merchant arrives. I clear a blue slime out of his way so he can get to his room and then buy a piggy bank and a bug net. It's raining, so I'll periodically go gather worms and other critters for future fishing and some quick cash. Before I can put up some proper doors, I get ambushed by a flying fish in the house, but then the doors go up and Molly the nurse is here. One more NPC and I'll have a proper village, which will greatly suppress monsters from spawning in this area, hence the doors rather than the walls of the last two nights. More construction, more flattening the ground near the house, and then I get that third NPC, Jake the Guide. It's a village now. Although monster spawns will be decreased, I go ahead and fortify the compound with some exterior walls and put a trapdoor in the ceiling. If I get a blood moon before I have my lava trap and fighting arena set up, I'll just need to bunker down until it's over, as I am way too weak right now for that event. I spend the rest of the night working on the house and soon all four basement rooms are ready for occupants. Trees get planted off to the left and then back at the house, I set up my flower garden on the roof. I'll tear this all down once I've got planter boxes from the dryad, but that might be a while, and I want to start growing herbs as soon as I can get the seeds for them. Before morning arrives, I decide to head off to the west. At the hillside tunnel, I decide to dig out to the other side, and along the way I find some more clay. I need one more pot to finish the third row of my garden, and in the left side of the hill is a nice patch of lead. As I dig, I'm looking at this hill and thinking it has some nice features for potentially a hilltop forest village. Perhaps I'll set up my main base here a bit later, but for now, I just tunnel to the other side, clear out some slimes, and hey, Sikharbal, the die trader, has arrived. Just down the hillside are a couple of really tall trees, I chop them down. I also find a sunflower, several mushrooms, and a desert biome. I'm quite a bit more confident now that I'll be able to handle the vultures and whatnot, and I go ahead and grab the cactus and palm trees. I hide in the water to take out a vulture, then keep heading west. Remember that purple slime at the beginning that took one damage per hit with my pickaxe? My wand is doing much better. Behind me an antlion has spawned so I take it down with my bow, and then head a bit further west where I grab more sunflowers and find another cave down into the ground. I quickly find an in bloom blink root, yay now I've got seeds for this important herb. I then get into trouble with a blue slime but a quick recall potion prevents another death and I'm back home to plant my blink root seeds. Sunflowers get placed for a happy buff, which gives movement speed and further reduces enemy spawn rates. I then craft a cactus sword, which is a small upgrade from my wood sword, mostly giving the benefit of increased knockback. A nurse? I'm pretty sure she blew up a bunny trying to hit a slime and not sure what she was doing after that. I can't remember off the top of my head what the ingredients are for the spelunker potion, so I show a blinkrete to my guide. And I'm gonna need to find the jungle and be there at night to get moon glow, unless I find a lucky herb bag that has some. Back in the cave I spot a batch of amethyst under some lava. This will definitely be enough to get me a grappling hook, so I head right up to get them. A little further down I find a nice patch of cobwebs. This should give me enough to make a bed and maybe a white string, though I probably won't bother with a wood yo-yo. It's pretty weak on master mode. Just below that, I find my first small bit of platinum. Now I know what my tier 4 ore is. More tungsten, then I see a rail track below, but then I have a direction fail against a red slime, and that's death number 6. Also, graves are made of rubber, apparently? At base, I immediately craft my grappling hook. Yay! This is my best upgrade so far, as it greatly enhances my mobility and lets me get out of harm's way by spider manning up to the ceiling. I also craft a lead pickaxe and get an agile speed mod, very nice, and then make a lead bow. I put together a loom and then craft a bed, it's a bit superfluous at this point as the spawn is in my house anyways, but I'll need it when I make a forever home somewhere else. I also make a white string and get a lucky mod for 4% increased crit chance, not the most useful mod right now, but better than nothing. Back in the east cave I grab some more clay, then run away from incoming zombies. 
I really want to find more platinum, so I skip as many mobs as I can heading down. I grab a tombstone, pick up money from my last death, and then head down to where I saw that rail line. There's a decent amount of lead here, so I grab some of it along with another grave, and then put my new grappling hook to good use. While mining, I hear the sound of one of those giant worms digging around, which puts me a bit on edge as they can surprise kill you pretty easily. A little lower, I grapple across a gap to a blooming blink root. While mining some lead, the worm does a flyby, so now I'm really on alert, and then accidentally grapple launch myself into the chasm and die from the fall. But good news, down below I see a big patch of platinum. More seeds get planted at base, I flatten some more ground, and then make a basic fighting arena. I've got enough health now that I could get a slime rain or blood moon, so best to be prepared. Then it's back to the east cave, so I can get that platinum. On the way down, I dig up the rest of the lead under the rail line, and off in a side cave, find a different patch of platinum and lead, so I grab that. Above that spot is a diamond gem corn tree that I harvest, and up above that, I can see a bag of gold. All nice finds. On my way to the gold sack, I grab a bucket of lava for my future volcano trap area, and off to the side find more emeralds. Then I head back down towards that first platinum spot, stopping for more lead and tungsten along the way, then killing some synchronized swimming slimes. Nice routine, guys! Looking to the right of the rail line, I see a jellyfish and take the opportunity to get some more glow sticks, but instead fail to see a second dart trap trigger and get decapitated for death number 8. But hey, looks like there's another life crystal off to the right, so it's not a total loss. Back at base, I harvest a blink root, pick up some stars, then smelt some platinum. I don't have enough to make much yet, but go ahead and make a broadsword, and then smelt some tungsten and notice that I can make an emerald staff. Unfortunately, it gets a sluggish modifier that will impact its overall DPS, but as a longer range weapon that lights up the area, it will be useful for exploring. Then it's back to the east cave again, and I get ambushed by a gnome in the tunnel. These guys can be pretty deadly, but I take him out with the help of a heal and then test out my new emerald staff. Sadly, while trying it out on a yellow slime, I get eviscerated for death number 9. Ugh, I'll get that platinum eventually. Straight back to the cave, take down another gnome, then head deeper. I head to the right of the rail line hoping to recover the two gold I dropped earlier and somehow manage to get hit by the darts again. It doesn't kill me in one hit this time, but I'm poisoned, so I don't dare move much until the poison wears off and I can heal up a bit. I grab the life crystal, then pick up some more emeralds to the side. An emerald grappling hook would have a range of just about 6 blocks more than the amethyst hook, or maybe I'll go for a better emerald staff. But while heading back, I get killed by the same dart trap. Death number 10. I am bound and determined to get that platinum though, so it's back off to the east gate for the umpteenth time. Back at my mortal enemy dart, I finally dig up the trap, grab my grave, and am rewarded with the traveling merchant's arrival. I grab some tungsten and am greeted by my first fairy that leads me to another life crystal. It's guarded by a bone chucking skeleton, but I take him out with my emerald staff and bow, then grab some tungsten, and my coveted platinum comes into sight. Rather than climbing down from above, I decide to tunnel over from the side. A platform bridge across the chasm, I then make sure I'll be as safe as possible before starting to mine and barricade myself in, only to almost get ganked by a ghost. A quick grapple to the ceiling keeps me safe though, and then I get to deal with a worm while a new demolitionist arrives. Finally, I work around the lava and get all the platinum. I nab some cobwebs to the left, mine some topaz, and warp back to base. After a quick emptying of my inventory, I head over to the traveling merchant. He has a couple of items that I'll need to make a cell phone, but I decide to save my gold for future pylon purchases. Then it's back to my crafting area and a platinum pickaxe. It doesn't get a mod, so I'm not sure how effective it will be compared to my lead one, but then I call it a day. Well, that's all for this entry. In future videos, I won't show as much of the mundane spelunking activities, and will focus instead on only the really good finds and upgrades, boss fights, or anything else interesting. But for this video, I really wanted to give you a good idea of what a new game of For the Worthy Master Mode looks like. I was actually quite pleased with only 10 deaths up to this point. Now if I can just get a moon glow and then find some more platinum, I should be able to get some good armor and then try a trip out to the coast. If you like this sort of video, please let me know down in the comments, and hit that like button and subscribe to help me grow the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!